gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of ER Stories. Now the hospital is a scary place, let alone the emergency room. Now what's so special about the emergency room where I work at is that it doubles as a trauma center. A trauma center is a ER that sees some of the more extreme cases of patients at their most vulnerable state. The patients in their most vulnerable state have expectations, certain expectations where doctors, nurses, ER techs, x-ray techs, etc., you name it, are there to be able to treat and help these patients at their most vulnerable, like I said before. Most vulnerable being they are looking and seeking for help, seeking some sort of treatment in order to relieve their symptoms, in order to save their lives, you name it. There are a lot of cases that I have seen almost working a year here at this trauma center that I have never seen at a normal emergency room. Now, being confident enough to talk about these things, I'm going to be sharing some of my instances, my experiences that I have not only seen, but I have felt working at this installation. Now, this is an introduction to the series, so I'm going to be basically explaining some of the things that we see at a trauma center. Now, a trauma center, again, is an emergency room as well. So a normal emergency room sees an influx of patients coming in and out. As patients come in, we diagnose them based on their symptoms, based on what we know from their medical history, and we act accordingly to that. If a patient needs to be kept overnight, we put them on the floor and um, make them into an inpatient or we treat them right away where the symptoms are just temporary and we send them on their way back home. Now for extreme cases that are traumas, some of the more exciting cases that we experience, it works a little differently. It could be either or. On this one particular night, I'm not going to go into great detail because this is the introduction to the series, there was an instance where some college kids were all drugged up from a local rave and decided to come in on a stretcher via ambulance, meaning they had no choice in the matter. A lot of these kids at the rave were found seizing, vomiting all over themselves, and when they came in, they were in such a state that made, made them feel almost inferior. A lot of these kids were delirious. They had no idea what was going on. We had no idea what drugs they were exposed to. So it was my job as a lab tech to draw their blood. And going in, I was careful not to expose myself to the vomit all over these kids' clothes. So I was very careful not to touch that. Of course, I was wearing gloves and all. But still, it was pretty disgusting. It was absolutely smelly. And these kids were just like dazed. So when I went in, I immediately drew the blood, labeled the specimens, it was off to the laboratory. It is absolutely vital that the doctors get these lab results as soon as possible to be able to treat these patients. They're treating them already, but with further analysis through the blood work, they're able to give them a proper treatment, figure out what's going on in their body systems, to figure out what is going on that is exasperating these symptoms and making them worse. So a lot of these things need to be kept in mind when working in the emergency room and it is a crazy situation and I am happy to be able to share these with you guys. Of course by popular demand a lot of you guys wanted me to create this series. So with that being said that ends the first episode or the introduction of this new series and I welcome and I thank you for joining. Anyways I'll catch you guys on the next one. This is GCP and I I'm sorry.